Hey, this is Matt with Let's Talk Music. I'm here with uh, Chris Watt of Fire Follows, uh, joining us from Colorado this evening, correct? Yes, sir. How's the weather out there, buddy? It's good, man. It's, uh, it's Colorado, so it's uh, it'll snow in the morning, then be like 50 degrees by the afternoon, melts off, and then kind of reset the next day. So it's all over the map, but it's good, man. <laughs> Yeah, we've actually been quite lucky here in Columbus, man. It's uh, been in the 60s and 70s. Of course, I heard it's supposed to bomb this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, the weather's just whatever. I wake up every day and go, what are we doing today? So it's all over the map, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about Fire Follows, man. Um, <clears throat> you got, got a new song out, Shedding the Skin, mm -hmm. uh, or Shedding This Skin, which yeah. uh, was uh, a pretty – phenomenal song really enjoyed it appreciate that man um you know it was sent to me i was like oh hell yeah I i'd like yeah. To talk to this guy yeah so absolutely. the band fire follows is that um is it just you or yeah okay. yeah so i've got uh emily gould does uh does some drumming for me and so i've got players if we could ever uh you know get this thing to a place where we're on the road um playing shows uh i've i've got musicians that can go do that but as far as the tracking side of things i just do all the tracking here at the studio solo and then um occasionally i'll bring emily in if i'm like hey what am i tell me what i'm missing on the drum stuff and she'll help me to fill in some of the gaps but otherwise it's uh it's it's pretty basic just to track it all in here solo oh okay well that's cool yeah. i mean that is that like i mean that's gonna be very time consuming insanely time consuming yeah i mean it's uh it's it's brutal uh, in a sense because I like shutting the skin probably took. I mean, I I would I don't know. It's hard to tally it up. I, I would say a couple few hundred hours um, to get that song tracked and edited and, and sent out for mixing mastering. So in that sense, it's uh, it's difficult. But at the same time, it, it allows me to really shape the songs into exactly what I want, you know, because I'm tracking it at my studio. I can take. I guess in theory, as much time as I need until I really get them to a place where I feel like they're ready to go. Okay. Yeah. So now you mentioned that Emily plays the, on the drum tracks, but mm -hmm. like, do you, do you do all the instruments yourself too? Yes. Okay. So you're, you're one of them uh, multi-talented fellas. Yeah, man. I always joke. It's just called, uh, you just, you, you kind of got to be a loner. You got, you know, it's the no friends model where you just sort of lock yourself in the studio for months on end. Um, and over time, you know, I think oftentimes like musicians develop skills out of necessity. Um, and there was periods in my life where I was probably doing that a little bit. But um, I've always, you know, played pretty much every instrument. And so over the years, I just try to develop that to the point where now I can at least play them well enough to uh, to do the fire follow stuff. Nice. Now, yeah. is uh, fire, fire follows your first project? Uh, in recent memory, yeah. When when I was much younger, I was with a different hard rock band. Um for a few years and then ended up having some issues with my voice where I lost it for a while and sort of peeled back from the music scene um, as I was doing some recovery stuff, trying to get that back. And then when I got back in, I was actually really afraid for a while to do the hard rock metal stuff because I ended up having a couple um, procedures on my throat. Uh, one of them actually left a prosthetic in my right vocal cord. So I was scared to oh, wow. really lean into it. And so I was kind of trying to do more of a, more of like an acoustic piano type thing which um i love that stuff and that's where a lot of my my sort of piano playing now came from was spending a few years really diving into that mm -hmm. uh, but i love this genre and so inevitably i was just going to move back towards this and yeah now we're now we're back in it and voice feels strong and so it's all good no it's good i mean it yeah. I, I know that <clears throat> um you know singing periods you can take a a pretty hard toll on your on your vocal cords and especially oh, yeah with a prosthetic in there. I mean, that's, that that's kind of, I've never heard of that before. It's a weird thing, man. I had a, they called it a, uh, it was basically vocal paralysis on the right side. It's called a paresis where it, it's moving a little, but not much. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when they put that in, it, it immediately, it didn't really do anything only in the sense that it, everything was so different. It took me probably three or four years after they put it in uh, just to relearn how to use it because everything was completely different. It felt different. It sounded different. Um, but after many, many years of just really grinding away, I was able to kind of get it where it was working again and then sort of develop a new voice around it. Um, and I, like, I couldn't be more stoked with the voice that I've got now. 
and sort of the versatility that I've got. And a lot of that just has to do with thousands and thousands of hours of, of reworking it and relearning how to use it. But um, yeah, it all worked out. It's, it's kind of, it's cranking with the fire follow stuff now. So, so, so yeah. Is this the, uh, the first single off of your, your new project or is it? Yeah, it kind of, sort of like the, obviously the music industry is such right now that everything is singles. So it's hard for me to even like delineate when one stops and the next one starts. Right. Uh, the, I would say of this kind of what I would call like this grouping, this is the second one. The The first one that sort of kicked this off was the song, the puppeteer. I think okay. that released on uh, September 9th, if I remember right. And then I'll try to get one more out. Um, I actually sent it out for mixing mastering about two days ago. I'm hoping that that one releases like literally last week of December. So mm -hmm. we'll basically have three puppeteers shedding the skin and the next song will be called Say Words. Um, those three will kind of cap the year end and then moving into next year, at least two or three more uh, that run through like March, April of 23. So hopefully at least like a five or six song block that can come out as kind of a, I don't know, like an extended EP or something like that, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. So who does your uh, mixing and mastering? Uh, Chris Henderson and Landon Hook, they are in uh, Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, they build a lot of outboard gear. Half my studio is stuff that they've built, um, but Landon does most of the mixing. Chris does the mastering, and then they also work with Maur Applebaum, uh, who he masters like the Star Set stuff and Dream Theater. And so it's a good group of audio guys that I can, you know, I can pour myself into the the tracking and editing and kind of get everything laid out. And then send it to them and we're only a couple few songs in but already like their process um it's just so similar to uh, mine from like workflow perspective mm -hmm. that as, as an artist and as much time as i spend on these like i've got to have a lot of trust sending this to someone and being like okay you know here's my baby <laughs> take good care of it and and these guys have been knocking it out of the park yeah, that's that's not the first time that I've heard that. Um, yeah. I've heard it from actually quite a few people that, you know, they'll talk about, <clears throat> you know, all a lot of the bands I do are DIY bands, um, you know, independent artists. So they're like, yeah, we'll get it all done. And then we send it off. And, you know, uh, one was like, man, I sent it off and it come back and it sounded like he's like, I was ready to kill that guy and this yeah. and that. Yeah. It's tough, man. I mean, like I, I, I've gone through, um, gone through is the wrong way to phrase it, but I, I've had three or four different like mix engineers, mastering engineers since I got the fire follows thing going a few years ago. And everyone just has a different approach towards it. Right. And everything's got to gel. Like I've got to know kind of what I'm sending these guys works for them. And they've got to understand sort of what I'm looking for when I send it. And there really is like a, um, there's just a, a synergy that has to happen there. And if it doesn't, like it can go awry real quickly, you know, when you're just sending out whatever, you know, a hundred stems to someone and it's like, <laughs> here you go, you know, figure it out. So, uh, but I, I really enjoy working with these guys and I, I fully expect this to be the group that I keep doing uh, the mix master stuff with for a long time to come. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I read that you also have a um, podcast. Yeah, kind. I mean, I've started doing some podcasting. I really, really, really need to uh, be more consistent with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's going to be an integral part of I've got a, a logging company that I run as well that I'm trying to sort of phase myself out of so that I can I, I would say I'm already more full time with the music. Mm -hmm. um, but adding the podcast is like it's yet another thing. And I think it's super important, but I got to just free some time up so that I can be more consistent with it. But a couple episodes, few episodes in, certainly more to come. Um, yeah, I'll be on top of it. Uh, you uh, sound like quite a busy fella. Yeah, at least right now we're in a crazy busy season, but um, it's all worth it, man. I, I love I love forward progress. I love creating music. And then the podcast is just a, a way to sort of communicate some of that, I think. And so I'm digging it. What do you call it? It's just the Fire Follows podcast. Okay. For now. For now. Now, uh, is that, so is that, I mean, what's it about? Is it more, is it like what you're doing with your music or just kind of? Yeah. So right now it's, I mean, again, we're, I'm only a few episodes in. I mostly just touched on like music stuff, music background, what the songs are, what the project is. 
once I really get on a on a kind of consistent schedule with it, I'll definitely talk music, but I also want to talk much deeper stuff too like what is what is what are the songs about right like i'd love to do an episode on each song and sort of unpack it lyric by lyric and let the listeners in to understand like oh wow there's a lot of metaphor going on here but this is sort of the central theme and uh i I think that'd be really cool to 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 provide some insight for that and then also touch topics that are outside of the music stuff as well so i think there will be just like everything else like a natural evolution of that um but again, I just, I got to get in and, and be more consistent. Once I am, I, I feel like that stuff just kind of flushes itself out. I see that's actually uh, <clears throat> typically one of the questions I ask about, you know, what the song's about, but I, I, I felt with yours, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I, mean, I love that, man. If, if you're listening to it, you're going to understand what it's about. For sure. You know, and <clears throat> I think nowadays more than ever, it's, it's more, people are in it for you know the rhythm or the, the you know a drum drum beat or you know just certain things like that it's like nobody i mean you could probably just yell into a microphone and somebody like oh man that's so freaking cool you know yep. but um i have always been you know i i grew i was born in 76 i, I i'm you know always been a huge fan of music love music and um have always just really try to understand the meaning of a song you know um now there's been a couple interviews i've done where you know i've been i I thought it was one thing and it was another yeah yeah absolutely (laughs) you know it's it's really cool that you know i i feel like i'm more in tune with it you know when i listen you know when when i get the the meaning of the song and that just to me is that's how i listen to music i mean you know it's like i mean for years my friends thought metallica master of puppets was some kind of satanic song and i'm like dude it's about cocaine yeah like do you not hear him chop your breakfast on a mirror you know so i mean it's it's always little things like that i've picked up and it's kind of um that's why i'm doing this i mean my, my wife was like dude you love music you talk about it all the time but i'm not the one to talk to about it because i'm not into it like you so right you know why don't you start a blog well here i am yeah (laughs) Yeah, i I love that man and and that's i've always been very much the same in terms of like this genre especially like the hard rock metal stuff the lyrics are they're very important to me you know and there's a lot of bands that i love some of my favorite bands that lyrically you know, I can tell they just they're just sort of throwing stuff together that's maybe interesting, like word painting and 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 that's cool. And I love that too. But like to me, if you can blend some of that metaphor and that word painting with stories, with themes, with like really consistent, now you're really you're creating something that's just really dynamic and really interesting. And that's always my my goal, right? Like I want the listener to I want the listener to come into the place that I was when I was creating it. Like I want the song to be an experience. I want you to, to hear it. And then, and then to have to listen again and again and again, because every listen unpacks a new layer of something, right? Like I want these to be really deeply woven and deeply written. And, and it's just super important to me. So I'm glad when, when, when you said, you know, I heard it and it's like, you know, this, I, I get what this song's about. Like, I love that. Right. I want that to be clear to come through to the listeners. So it's cool. Right. man. So, I mean, what, what goes into your songwriting process, man? I mean, is it life stories or just, you know, ways that you might be feeling that at that mm-hmm. moment or what? Yeah. It's like, it's some of it is macro, you know, like big life story kind of theme stuff. Other times it might be just like a moment of uh, like a very just a moment in time that was observed and then trying to uh, something that was powerful and then trying to sort of imagine more to what that moment might have been and capture it in a song or or something to that effect i mean like this you know shedding this skin song that the opening line of the chorus right shedding this skin that never was mine right i mean there's the theme of the song right and then everything else supports that but like songs like that then even the the one that came out in september the puppeteer i mean those are very much me just looking around at the world right now, which is very weird. I don't care who you are, or what your belief system is. It's a weird place okay. and, and nothing <laughs> makes sense right now. Um, and a lot of things are upside down. And 
the more you look at it, the more you just start going, wait, what, 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 what is this? Like, what is this place? What, what are we doing here? You know? Um, and so a lot of the songs, because that's resonating so strongly with me right now, a lot of the songs are coming from that place of really just trying to see things as they are mm -hmm. instead of as we've all been told they are, you know, it's like, it's like peeling back some of those layers and going, yeah, I don't think any of this adds up, you know, and, uh, and really trying to capture that in, in ways that people can understand and relate to, at least that's the goal. Right. And well, I mean, and that's what I'm saying, like with uh, shedding the skin, I, I caught on right away and I, yeah. I, I be honest with you, it, it was, uh, <clears throat> I felt a connection to it, you know what I mean? Cool, um, because, I, I'm I'm sort of the same way. I'm just like, wow, you know, hear yeah. something on the news or you know whatever. I'm just like, really? Yeah, you know, I know. It's it's horrible, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, you, you never hear of, you know, a man rushed into the house to save his wife and three kids. It's more of he set the house on fire with his wife and three kids in there. You know, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it. I I feel like we're getting trolled every day by <laughs> by our media and by our our leaders air quotes here right it's like yeah. they're fucking with us it's just yeah i don't like it yeah but i mean it's it's cool that i mean <clears throat> some I, I know that there's been a lot of uh bands that you know i'm not saying you're political but a lot of bands that have been political that have, have kind of made a difference i mean you got rage against the machine that was really political um, you know, Megadeth is another one that people don't really realize. I mean, they're constantly yeah. talking about, you know, world issues and problems with religion and this and that. And I mean, everybody's just like Megadeth, you know, and it's like, right, right. listen to the songs, dude. Well, it's like what you're talking about, though, right? It's like the meaning beneath the meaning. You know, most people, it doesn't take much. It's just it's the beat or it's the energy behind the song. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I think as a as a songwriter, like you want to be aware of that, that some of your audience, they, they're just feeding off the general energy of the song. And it's yeah. like, cool. But then you also want to have that next layer for the for the for the more attuned listener. That's like, I need to know what this is about. Right. And mm -hmm. and then and then so you want to offer them something, too, I think at least that's that's the frame that I'm always trying to come from is like, I want you to get again, it's an experience. Right. And if you just want to experience at the music, the sound kind of the the general energy level, like rad. But if you want to like dive down the rabbit hole with me, like let's say some cool shit here, you know, let's, try right. to, let's unlock some things. So, well, and I think that would be, you know, I'd, I definitely like to listen to your podcast because, uh, you know, I would like to hear your, you know, your explanation of the song is and, and how you was talking about how you're peeling back the layers and getting yeah. Deep, deeper. Yeah. Because yeah. to me, I mean, you know, just because, I catch the meaning of what you were saying and does it mean that it means the same thing to me as it does to you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to, uh, to be able to hear you talk about, you know, what you felt when you wrote that and what it's actually about, you yeah. know, like, Oh shit. Yeah. That was, that's the same thing I was thinking. Or I could be like, Oh man, that's a whole different perspective. Absolutely. And isn't that the coolest part about any song is like, like it could mean something to you that's so powerful. And it's like that might have never crossed my mind when I was writing it. But to the listener, when they apply it to their situation, it's like you got this whole other thing. I like mm -hmm. it's the coolest part of music, right? It's like getting to personalize that stuff. So, right. And I mean, that's I, I think I, I actually wrote a blog. Um, it was called How Does Music Make You Feel? Mm -hmm. um, when I restructured my um, website, I think I deleted it, but it's uh, okay. more of like all the different emotions that you can feel from a song. Yeah every human emotion that you know we have you can tie to a song oh yeah and i i've always i thought that was always cool about music too is like you yeah. know okay you know i'm pissed off i'm gonna go listen to some pantera you know i'm sad i'm gonna listen to you know boys to men or whatever you want to listen yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's it was actually fun writing it and um you know i kind of used a lot of personal experience with it too um yeah. You know, I I don't have any journalism background or anything like that. I just I, I took my love for music and you know started doing stuff like this. Um, yeah. You know, and it's an it's the same with you. I mean, I, I time has been a problem for me. Um, you know, because I work a regular job. Yep. And um, you know, that's why I do these interviews so late because it's you know I'm, I want to make sure that I'm done. And sure. um, you know, sometimes I don't get to prepare well enough. 
or, you know, whatever, you know, there's weekends that I want to do work on my website. I've got, you know, stuff to design things with. I've got, you know, screen printing materials. I got, you know, uh, yeah. sublimation printer and I want to get a store up, but I just haven't, you know, had the time. Of course. So, yeah. And it's like every weekend I'm like, I mean, I'm going to do it this weekend and then something comes up. So, but, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's one of the things like my wife, she's like, you know, oh, you know, you put all this money out and we, we, we're not getting anything back from it yet. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it'll come. I'm like, yeah. but you know, it's, it, she also looks at it in the sense of, I love doing this and she loves it. I love it. Absolutely. So, yeah. Dude, it's for what it's worth, man. I mean, it's the same thing on this end. Like I spend so much money um, making music mm-hmm. and, and obviously, you know, sending it out to the, to the, to the guys I send it to and, and just the, you know, the promotion and the marketing and stuff like I make, I make, I, I lose a lot of money making music. Let me put it that way. And I couldn't be more okay with it. Like, this is what my life is for. This is what, like, I have found purpose in doing this and I continue to find more. And, and I'm like, look, it it has to say, it's not about the money. It's like, no, no, I'm also cool. Like losing money. <laughs> like it's fine. Cause it's, it's the thing that like makes being on the planet worth being here for me, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if you, it's like, it's like, look, you love it. You invest in it. Maybe at some point you get some return on that investment, but, but even if, even if for me, and I don't know if, I, if you feel the same way, but it's like, even if that return isn't like monetary, it's like, what else am I going to do? Like, I, I, I'm, I, I love this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend the money on it. If I get something back, great. But if not, I'm getting so much back beyond the money side of it. It's like, fuck it. Just just keep keep it going, you know? So Oh yeah. And I mean, the it's the little things that I get excited about. Like uh I I got a um I think it was an email from uh my host, my my web host, and it was yeah. like, Congratulations, you've hit ten thousand views, you know. Yeah. And um you know, I had a record label, Noble Demon, over in Germany mentioned me in a comment. Okay. You know, so I was pretty stoked about that. And yeah. it's like these little things are what really just makes me happy and feel like, okay, you know, I'm I'm doing what I love with yeah. this and I'm I'm having fun and you know, uh, I'm getting some recognition, you know. Yeah. Start starting to put that little dent in the universe, right? Right, right. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. it would be, I mean, it'd be super cool to make, you know, thousands of dollars off of it. But, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And, man. and, and, and actually, um, that's why I, I, one of the things I want to try to do after the first year is start a podcast also. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I want to do probably, you know, about 15, 20 minutes of just, you know, talking and whatnot and then i want to be able to take cracks from you know people that i've interviewed and like hey you know me and such and such had a really nice conversation let's just say you know we're talking about us i was like you know me me and chris had a really nice conversation we made a nice connection and you know here's chris's latest single you know and and put on the podcast because with independent artists you can do that now you do you do that on youtube you get a copyright claim because somewhere somebody's got the rights to that song yeah no doubt but you know with the internet radio it's a little more vague you know and it's just i i you know would like to get all these people that i'm interviewing you know out there i mean i i wish that i just had you know like the person in california that hit that lottery you know, I, I would have loved for that to be me because I tell you what, I would have probably, I mean, who wouldn't love for that to be them? But, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. you know, I would have taken, <clears throat> God, probably 500 grand and opened up a, a recording, you know, business or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, would just be like, let's get these bands in here. Let's get them, you know, out there making, you know, big, big tours and stuff. Yeah. And, and that's it, man. I mean, it's just, it's my love for music. And like I said, yeah. it's, it's it's so uh, it's just a huge part of me i i feel yeah. like if tomorrow music was to be taken i would be empty yeah you and me both man you know it's it is it's just hard to explain and i mean some people are like well psh, i could care less or you know same with like well you know if movies were to stop or whatever well you know 
uh, everybody's got their own, you know, what makes them whole. And, Absolutely. you know, it, it's music to me is what it, is a huge part of my life. I mean, it's, yeah. it's helped me through some really tough times. Um, hell, you know, my sister passed away and her uh, at her funeral, she had Journey, Don't Stop Believing play. Mm -hmm. And her and I used to listen to that song every time she was over. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I've always loved that song to begin with, but now it's got a really special purpose to it. You know what I mean? Sure. So, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's just, it's, it's the one thing in this world that, you know, speaks universally and, and that people can relate to each other with, without hatred, without prejudice. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And I really do appreciate artists like yourself that, you know, are, are making songs like you are. I mean, yeah. you know, it's with a purpose. Yeah, no doubt. And that's, uh, <clears throat> that's just what, what, um, it's what I love to do. It's what motivates me. And, and like, you know, I, I just can't see any other way to go about doing it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's fun. Keep it pure and 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 just keep grinding away at it and and good stuff just happens um you know i keep meeting really cool people and there's all sorts of cool opportunities i just uh yeah it's just a it's a cool space man i i i'm i'm right there with you if if, if this wasn't part of my life i genuinely don't know what i'd be doing mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just it, it's what keeps the wheels on the bus you know yeah. yeah and that's that's what i'm talking about man i mean it's it's, it's cool to talk to somebody that feels the same way i do um Oh yeah. yeah. And what else is cool is like, I mean, like I said, I've been doing these bands across the <laughs> pond, man, from like, you know, Poland and uh my God, uh Ireland, uh Switzerland, Sweden, you know. And it's really cool to talk to them and hear their perspective on, you know, music over there versus music here and yeah. you know, how the two influence each other and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it like I said, it is truly a universal language. I mean, oh yeah, no doubt. Everybody, I think, in the world can relate somehow to, to music. For sure. And For sure. I mean, you are one lucky man to be part of that process. Yeah, yeah, I feel very grateful, and and as I keep doing it, and I keep hopefully getting better at it, and 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 learning how to how to write songs that more deeply resonate with people, it just. Uh, yeah, it just keeps building, you know. So, like, what's the plans in 2023? You thinking, you know, you was talking about maybe a couple more singles, but you thinking about maybe getting out there a little bit? Yeah, dude, my, the whole thing right now, like, I've got, <clears throat> so this third song will, will uh, hopefully come out, like, late December, if we can time it out correctly. And then I want to make sure I've got, I've got basically at least a full album, probably, probably closer to two, that'll keep rolling out one by one as singles over the next god knows however long but i would really love and the goal right now i've got a couple of groups i'm talking to about this getting on as an opener with a with a with a band that you know i, I it's so difficult uh, at least it can be to to just get sort of that first uh bit of momentum building but mm -hmm. that's the goal is get on as an opener uh even if it's a short leg of a tour with somebody just mm -hmm. to kind of get that thing moving, you know, and, and I spend so much time in studio tracking that I, I want to make sure I've got enough that I've got the right material, enough material that's out there that can be toured, you know, right. and, and they're the like, especially with like this kind of run of songs, starting with the puppets here in September. That's why, you know, get five, six, seven of these out. That's enough of a set, just that package right there, I think. Mm -hmm. um if you're gonna be the opening band you're, you're normally not playing a whole lot more songs you know than that it's a pretty quick right. opening set usually that would be that would be ideal and that's the goal right now is is as soon in 2023 as the opportunity pops up i got the players they're ready to go um and do whatever it takes and just get on as an opener and try to just get into that circuit and get going with it so fingers crossed we'll be able to pull that together awesome yeah, yeah. that's uh that's from what I understand the funnest part of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Out there and playing in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've spent so many hours grinding away by myself in here. It'll be good to get out of the house a little bit and actually get in front of some people and play it, you know? So, <laughs> yep. All right, Chris. Well, I, um, <clears throat> I appreciate your time. I, I yeah. thank you very much for talking with me. And, um, it was a very insightful talk. Um, yeah. 
I'm glad that there are other people out there that feel like I do. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I look forward to the new singles and, uh, you know, hopefully when 2023 runs around and you guys get out on the road, maybe you'll shoot through this way. Yeah, absolutely, man. We'll do. And I so appreciate you having me on, man. All right, buddy. And uh, also, I'll check out your podcast, too. Uh, what's What can I find that on? Just, I mean, if you just search uh, like Fire Follows on YouTube, as mm -hmm. it's literally just in the same channel that all the singles and all the music is releasing through. Awesome. So, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll get the, you know, word out for that one, too. Oh, cool. Sounds great, bro. All right, man. Well, you have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it, man. All right. Later.